Hello and welcome to Hack5, my name is Darren Kitchen, it's your weekly dose of techno lust, and I'm so excited because special guests this week, listen, if you don't recall a few weeks ago I went up to Seattle and had a blast with Glitch and Blake and Alec, and we shot that little bag video about what, you know, what Glitch's EDC stuff is, or his everyday carry, and that seems to have gone pretty well, but what we didn't dig into was some of the kind of crazy antics that happened right before then, and uh, maybe I'll let Glitch speak more to it uh, in greater detail of if this is your sort of bag, uh, but honestly, you know, essentially what happened was a drone got stuck in a tree, and, and, and clearly the, the only way to get it drone unstuck from a tree is to pop on down to the local hardware store and build yourself an air cannon. Uh, clearly. And you see, this is why I love Glitch, because he has got that quintessential ma hacker mindset. And, and also because, you know, you guys keep asking, I figured why not have him on the channel? Uh, we've been hanging out a lot on the aptly named hang Hangouts. Hey, look, it's a glitch on a Hangout. And um, I just thought, you know, there's a lot of these awesome projects that he's working on lately, and it would be really cool to have him on, namely this one today that's involving a power glove and a big honking robot of doom. So this week, I'm going to hand it over to my friend Glitch. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Before we get started, let's have a look at this air cannon that he mentioned. This is a pretty simple affair. It's just a couple of threaded PVC pipes, uh, Schedule 80, connected to a ball valve, and on the end there's an end cap and a Schrader valve, or where a Schrader valve would go if I had one. And that's where you connect a uh, air pump. It pressurizes this tank. You turn the valve, and it fires off this projectile, which pulls a long length of 7-pound test string over. You tie off a section of 50 pound test rope. I don't have any handy. And then you just tug on the branch with that rope. And sooner or later, you shake the drone out of the tree and with minimal physical effort. Air cannons are cool and all, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Today, I wanted to show you a project I've been working on for quite a while that's uh, part of something much larger. And that is this power glove. And that's gonna be used to control that guy. That is a, will be a 150 pound robot that I hope to get out to DEF CON this year. More on that later. But first let's talk a bit about what the power glove was. In its most basic form, it was a couple of ultrasonic microphones mounted in the front half of this glove that received signals from ultrasonic emitters mounted in a frame around your TV. Those emitted varying tones and frequencies. And so if you close your eyes for a second and turn your head left and right while you're listening to this video and lean side to side and, you know, tilt your head up and down, you can more or less understand where the TV or your monitor is just by how the sound phases in and out between your ears. And that is basically how this worked using ultrasonic frequencies rather than audible ones. Considering this is what they had to work with in the 80s, it was a pretty clever solution. But for what I'm trying to do, it's not quite, uh, not quite right. Ultrasonic has a certain level of inaccuracy and unreliability, especially in crowded, you know, environments like DEF CON. Not to mention that the sensors had to be mounted to something that was stationary and you had to be facing those sensors. And I intend to be moving around, driving this robot around, and so I wanted something with a lot more freedom and movement. And that's where this hack comes in. Basically, I removed the original ultrasonics, made some custom PCBs, and mounted an inertial measurement unit, or an IMU, to them. As the name implies, an inertial measurement unit measures inertia. It uses gyros, accelerometers, and even a magnetic compass to measure its location and orientation relative to the Earth's gravity and uh, magnetic field. And what that means is the Earth is its point of reference rather than the ultrasonic sensors mounted to your TV. So you can go anywhere just about and it will be able to maintain its orientation and understand where it is in the world and how it's moving. The military would have killed to have sensors this accurate and small back in the 80s. The great thing about the sensor I'm using, the Bosch BNO055 sensor, is that it uses an onboard ARM Cortex chip to calculate all the data, process it all, and just give you out raw acceleration and angle values for the various axes. All you do is send it a command like event.orientation.x, event.orientation.y, and it gives you the relevant data. You don't have to do any processing yourself. Now, this is a bit unlike the MPU 6000 and MPU 9000 series that uh, a lot of drones are going to have on board. 
those are a lot faster. They can send out data a lot more quickly, but it's up to you, the end user, to process that data. And that's something that is I want to play with, but I don't really have the time or uh, knowledge to do that at the moment. So I'm spent about 10 times more on the sensor, but it's 100 times easier to use and integrate into something like this where absolute maximum refresh rate isn't exactly a necessity. Now this sensor speaks over I2C or I squared C, uh, which is just basically a two wire protocol, a bit like serial, but not quite. It, it's a bit out of scope to discuss here. And that sends data back over these connections to this Teensy LC microcontroller. And that's the whole brain of this operation. It does a little bit of processing of the data, uh, just making sure it's within range, and then it packages it up and sends it out to this nrf 24 l one module. It just sends the data out, it gets uh, received on the other end, unpacked from its string, and then that gets used in, to control the robot or whatever your application is. Now, before we go any further, I wanna give a huge shout out to Nolan Moore over on Hackaday.io. He originally did a project very similar to this. In fact, I'm using his PCB files with some of my own modifications. He, his project used an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module that some of you may be familiar with. And that's great and all, but I intend for this to be used at DEF CON, as I've alluded to before. And that is not exactly a sane environment to be using such a radio system in. In fact, even the 2.4 gigahertz of the NRF module I'm using isn't ideal, and I intend to swap that out with 900 megahertz. Now, it's not exactly the best strategy, but I think this makes it a little more obscure and a little less likely that it'll be sniffed and messed around with or even just interfered with. Because security through obscurity is the best security. Right? Right? Now, in just a moment, I'm going to show a demonstration of the data I'm getting from the glove, how that's being worked with, and even have a couple of servos moving around. But first, in classic Hack5 style, a word from our sponsors. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names hosting an email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. All right, in the top right, I have a serial monitor of all the data coming from the power glove. I just have it connected over USB right now. And here I have the receiver module I've built for the robot. This has an NRF module on board that receives the signal from this one. And it has an Arduino Nano, which processes that data, makes sure everything's within bounds, and then sends that data out to these PWM pins that control servos or ES or motor controllers or anything you want. And just for this demonstration, I have a couple servos set up here, a pan and a tilt. And you can see that when I roll this right and left, the servo follows. And if I tilt up, you can't really see it because it's in axis with the camera. There you go. You can see that this follows, or it's inverted because I need to invert the servo, but you get the idea. And I'm also sending, as you can see in the top right, the flex sensor data. If I flex these fingers, and even some button presses that you can tell forward, reverse, left, right. And you get the idea. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and whether or not you'd like to see more about that big robot I keep teasing. Also be sure to check out youtube.com slash glitch for more information and a full code breakdown and a deeper dive into the receiver. And with that, glitch out.